Welcome back to Brotherhood of Torque. Today we have another fun, exciting project. Now today we are going to be giving the O2 excursion some brake love. Now you guys might remember this thing from the other videos and um, it's it's been a great truck for me. It just uh, it's gonna need some love. I've uh, I was driving it around a lot during the winter. And we had snow because the four-wheel drive works great, but um, brakes leave something to be desired. The rear brakes stink really bad, so I suspect there was a, a axle seal leak because anytime you uh, anytime the brakes get warm, it smells like you know stinky gear lube, and um, yeah, they squeak really, really bad. So we're gonna see what's under here. Your guess is as good as mine as to what we'll find. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this front driver side jacked up, and we'll uh, get started. Now, before you jack it up. It's a good idea to loosen the lug nuts if you're doing it by hand. Now, if you have an impact, it really doesn't matter, but if you're doing it by hand, you want the wheel on the ground so it doesn't just spin when you're trying to break it loose. And like anything, when you're jacking something up, chalk the wheels, I put a rock behind it, so it shouldn't roll, but these are already loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jack it up and support it with the jack stand. All right, now before we install this big pile of goodness onto this thing, we got to get these guys off. Now, you can tell this rotor has been on here a long time. I mean, this thing's pretty dang rusted and there's not much le life left on the brake pad. So, first thing we want to do is get these calipers off. And of course, it's going to get windy now. Well, good thing I'm tucked under the truck. Sorry if it's messing up the audio. Try my best to avoid it. So, let's screw these bolts. All right, now the caliper bolts are loose, but these brake pads have like a little uh, a little teat on them, so you have to kind of compress the caliper, shove this in there, and compress it back. You can see as I'm doing it, this is coming more loose. See, I'm just push, compressing the piston into the body, and boom, now it came out. You can see these calipers have had quite a bit of wear on them. These little, uh, these little tension wires are broken. So it was definitely time for brakes on this beast. Okay, the pads can come out now. And yeah, these things were definitely worse for the wear. Now that this caliper is out of the way, we gotta take the caliper bracket off because we're gonna replace it. Now, one thing you gotta look out for is this little hose right here is the vacuum line for your auto locking hubs and the end of it feels like it's kind of flared out so i'm gonna go ahead and cut it because if you lose vacuum there your four-wheel drive won't work and you'll end up having issues with the climate control because the climate or the climate control is fed by vacuum so get these loose Fortunately, it'd be hard to get an impact gun in here. That's nice. Oh, yeah, you can let it dingle. We're changing the brake hoses, but normally you want to support this up so that you don't strain the brake hose. But this is a score right here. The, the rotor is actually loose. A lot of the time on vehicles that live in a rusty area, you got to fight those things to get them off because they'll be rusted to the uh, hub. But not on this one, fortunately. You can tell 
A lot of stuff's been leaking under this truck. So we're gonna have to address all that at some point. There is your caliper bracket and boom, rotor comes off and yeah, that's a nasty one. All right, let's get the new one. Now, before we put these on, we're gonna clean them. Now, these ones usually don't come shipped with too much stuff on them, but some of the rotors you'll get from the parts store will have a compound on them that keeps them from rusting. So you wanna make sure you get that off or it will destroy the brake pads. And these ones have the finish on them that pretty much keeps them from rusting. So it's not too, too big of a concern, but you just wanna make sure it's pretty clean. Now these ones look significantly better than those obviously, but those are old as hell. So I'll come over here. Stick that on and what I'll do is I'll take a lug nut and twist it on. spin it to the bottom so that when we're working on the uh, putting the caliper and the caliper bracket on it's not fighting us so next up will be the caliper and caliper bracket all right guys here is our new caliper now you can buy these things loaded which will include the bracket new rubber and what's nice about these is they're completely remanufactured all new rubbers and whatnot so these are these ones are actually from Napa. Now, I usually use the power stop ones, but um, I don't have the right ones for this truck, just my other Super Duty. So these will get installed the same way the other ones came off. But when you're buying these, usually on the box, it won't designate right or left or driver or passenger. So this one will go on this side because of the bleeder screw orientation. Now, this is a cylinder in here that's full of brake fluid. So you want to make sure that this bleeder is up so that when we go to bleed the air out of it, the air will rise to the top and we can get it out. Now this one actually has an L designating left or driver's side. So that's quite nice of them. So like I said, installation is just like removal. Come in here, get it on, line it up, lower it down, watch your fingers. This is a Ask me how I know situation. I, you probably can't get in there and see the bottom because the camera's not mounted to my head. So go ahead and uh, tighten these up and then you can move on. And now we're gonna open the caliper. Swing her up. And now we're gonna put the brake pads in. Now we're gonna take the hardware and we're going to try to match it up with what was on here and orient it the same way now this is the old caliper bracket you can see they look about the same so i'm going to go ahead and uh, pop that one right there easier said than done sometimes there's that one and then this one looks the same so we'll put it on the upper Caliper up, make sure it doesn't punch me in the face again. Time for the brake pads. Now, I really like this stuff. It, yes, it gets all over and it doesn't like coming off skin, but it makes for really quiet brakes. So I just take some of it and smear it on. Try to coat the parts of the pad where the metal's showing. Now, in this kit, it doesn't look like the brake pads are side specific. Sometimes they are. So let's kind of take a look. See, there's, there's nothing different per side. So they should be either or. So let's take this, swing it up. Try not to get the 
brake quiet on the face of the pad that hits the rotor because it'll make a mess. This caliper is not playing ball, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take it out. I don't wanna get my fingers guillotined. Same thing here. Just like that. Now you wipe your fingers off, turn this over so you don't get red crap all over the place. I'm gonna put the caliper back on. You can see all the new slide lube in there. And just kind of help it back. And now it's time for the little clips. Now these clips are to help the, or the brake pads pull away from the rotor. So when you're going to do this, it is going to try to push them away. So just kind of be aware of that. Okay, so you take the little wire, orient it like this, swing it around and put it there on that one. And then take the upper one, put it there. and close the caliper. Might fight you a little because those spring clips. And tighten your bolt up. So what's a little different than most brake jobs is I'm going to replace the brake hose. This thing has over 300,000 miles on it and I don't know when the last time it was done. What's kind of nice about this brake hose is that it comes with that line for the locking hub that I was telling you about that I was probably gonna have to replace. So let's get started with that. You can see it pretty much matches the same shape as the other one. So it'll go like that. So you take this bolt out now this bolt that's in the side of the caliper has is hollow in the center and has a little hole right there which allows the fluid into the caliper. So match it up like that and it will end up like sure. So you can tell like that. That's the top of the caliper. Now you don't want to absolutely nut down on this thing, but you want it pretty snug so it'll compress those copper washers and seal everything up. And these are sacrificial washers. Once you use them, they're done. So you don't want to try to use them again because then you'll just cause trouble. Okay, that's done. So what this looks like is there's a bolt holding it right here. And it looks like it bolts from the other side, which is gonna kind of not be fun, but we'll just roll with the punches on this one. So I'm gonna figure out what size it is and how to get it off. The bracket is actually held on by a tiny little eight millimeter bolt, this guy. And I got at it by crawling up and sticking the ratchet in there. So now that that's loose, we're gonna go ahead and change this out. So I went ahead and sprayed some brake cleaner on the rag and cleaned the nut back here because this is a, a flare nut and you don't want a bunch of crap on it when you're trying to unscrew it. And then this is the vacuum line from the four wheel drive solenoid for the hubs. So this is a special nut wrench. You see it's thicker, but it's slit so you can put it over the line and loosen it. So we're gonna go ahead and see which size it is. And try to hold it. So what we're gonna do is try to unscrew this as quick as possible and get it back onto this guy as quick as possible. 
don't we want to try to keep as much air from getting in the system as possible even though we're going to be bleeding it sorry i know it's hard to see guys now you got to be mindful of this that's the wire for the abs don't want to break that Yeah, made sure the cap is still on the master cylinder, so it might help create some bit of a vacuum so that we don't drip too, too much. So that's out. Put this one in and start tightening. Ooh, getting windy. You want to try to avoid getting brake fluid on the paint because yeah you don't want it on the paint it'll eat it and bubble it up so you want to most definitely keep it off that and then any excess you want to clean off okay hold it and tighten it that's okay we got down we got done what we were wanting to get done in there so take your brake cleaner like when I say clean it off legit get all the brake fluid off see you can tell when it's clean because it'll start evaporating all right so I'm just gonna crawl under and put the bolt back in. Right now, the little bolt's tight. So we wanna try to get this ABS line off of the old brake hose. Oh, yeah, and it's gonna continue to drip. Make sure it's not hung up on anything and Get it off there. This way, and now we can pull the old caliper off. Try to make sure that it stays as upright as possible. Now the old caliper is gonna go back. We're not gonna have to worry about that right now. Take the ABS line, put it into these nifty little fellas. A nice tight fit. Now take the little four wheel drive hose and shove it onto the nipple. Boom! And that's how you do the brake pads on the front of one of these. The other side is the exact same thing, just the opposite side. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and bang that side out, and then we'll come back do the rears and bleed the brakes and all that fun crap. Well, passenger side is done and it looks pretty good. I think this is gonna hugely help it stopping. So now that this is done, I'm going to progress towards the back. All right, so we are at the back now and you can see this one is the one that was having the issue with the leak and it looks like it still might be doing it. So there's really no way to know without getting in here. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start by removing the caliper with the two bolts. Yeah, this is quite the mess back here. Is that one and this is the e-brake cable in my hand see what she looks like 
it's gonna be the same thing. Kind of gotta compress the piston. Should let it come off now. This hose is getting changed as well, but kind of really don't want to just let it dingle. Yeah, not happy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, caliper bracket off. Yeah, this thing has been leaking for a while now. I don't know where we stand as far as the uh, axle seal, so gotta get this rotor off. I'm wondering if the e-brake's gonna fight me. Let's see. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to pound this guy off. All right, a couple taps, the hammer and it came off. Let's, oh boy. Yeah. That is not bueno. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to rebuild all of this. Look at these vents. They're non-existent. They're just full of crap. So, yeah, that's all terrible in there. I'm gonna have to uh, pull the axle and we're gonna have to go from there. I'll show you how to do it, but I'm gonna have to go get uh, some parts. All right, now, on one of the super duties or excursions or heavier duty vehicles, the axle will look a little different. The other, the lighter duty ones will usually have the lug nuts on this, but this is a full floating axle. So what's nice is if this were to break, if you broke the axle shaft, you can actually just take these bolts out, slide the whole thing out, and then use a magnet, pull the broken piece out, and slide a new one back in. The, um, there's a bearing in here and a bearing in there that helps support the weight, as well as one on the inside so that basically the, uh, so that the axle isn't bearing pretty much any of the weight versus uh, you know a standard size like a passenger car one where the actual axle's sticking out of the seal and the bearing and it has the wheel kind of putting the force on it. So this one, yeah, the shaft just serves the purpose to spin. So you gotta unbolt all these bolts and then kind of be ready for it to come out. Now this is obviously not been a part in a long time. I don't know how much fluid's in here. So you can, you're gonna find it at the same time I am. That's gross. Now, like you following along, I had initially planned on just doing these brakes, but I can't pull this apart like this and leave it alone. It'll just destroy any brake pads I put in it. So we have to do it, not to mention damaging the rear end. So I'm gonna put this axle shaft in the garage and I'm gonna go get the special socket to take that apart. All right, guys, now what you're seeing here is the result of a massive axle seal failure. Now, there's a seal in here on the back of this hub that's supposed to keep all the fluid in, and obviously it's not. So I'm glad we found this. As you know, I was doing the brakes, and the brakes have always kind of smelled, I don't know, like hot oil. We gotta get this thing out and change it. So I had to go pick up some stuff, but this is the axle nut socket now. Great. Um, it's pretty unique in the fact that, I mean, look at it, it doesn't even look like a socket. So what it does is it goes in there and lets you turn, there's four little indentations in this thing. So it lets you uh, unscrew that axle nut. So what you're supposed to do is take this and stick it in here and it grabs the little tangs like that and you oh boy
Take the ratchet off. And there's your nut. And now this, there's a bearing in there that I gotta be mindful about, which is why I got the cardboard. So. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work this thing off. Okay, the uh, outer bearing is out and it looks, it looks okay. I just have to get the inner out. Doesn't look like it wants to pull over the seal. Let me see if I can knock the seal out. like it's pretty stuck on there okay well, that's what was keeping it on the seal was not letting it come out so went ahead and pried on it a little more and here's the inner bearing and here's the hub and there's the failed seal so <laughs> as you can see this is disgusting there's no way this would have kept working So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down and, and get this bearing out of there and the nut. Go ahead and spray it down and try to clean it so I can get it apart. Got this little brush. It's probably not gonna do much, but yeah, it's <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah, this brush isn't doing crap. I'm gonna go get, there we go. Aha, success. I'm gonna try to get all this crap out, so. I'm just gonna clean all around. But first, I'm gonna try to get these stupid brake pads off. <laughs> or these brake shoes, sorry. So to get these buggers off, it's held on by that, so you push on it and turn it and that comes out and the same with the other side and turn and it comes off then the e-brake portion is in there still so you can oh my god this is terrible this was a spring at one point so I'm gonna try to see if I can Get it out of here. I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to pry these things apart and get the spring out. Let's see. Okay, now, so I've been cleaning in here, cleaning the backing plate and trying to get all the crap out. Now, these springs came out. This spring goes on the back of the shoes and this one goes on top. And then this self adjuster goes on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and, ooh, it's windy. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start reassembling it. old ones in here 
So let's look at how they go. They're gonna go like that. So what I had was this on the bottom, like that. Then this guy over the top. So that's how that was. And the bottom is a little different, so take this one out. See if I can get them in there. Supposed to go in there. Like that. All right. So the back spring is hooked on both sides. So what I need to do is stretch it over there like that. Push that one in there like that. And now the bottom one needs to be addressed. So you do is you take this little pin shove it through then take the front portion take pliers push on it What we're trying to do is get this pin to go through there and then once it's through there we'll twist it that'll keep the brake shoe in place okay so the little retainers are on. Now we just have to focus on the bottom. Now you can see that this little self adjuster goes there and then the spring goes there. So I'm gonna pull all that apart and clean the self adjuster. Now when you clean the self adjuster, it never hurts to put some grease in it because this little guy rides on the screw so what I'm gonna do is take a little axle grease put a glob there Now that thing's lubed, so we can put the self-adjuster in. Okay, there's that. Now you wanna make sure that you orient the self-adjuster properly because if you can see right here, there's the little rubber plug that you pull out to adjust it if you need to. So if the star wheel was flipped around, you wouldn't be able to access that thing. Wow, quite a mess. Driveway was nice and clean at one point, but it's had to get done. Okay, so we got that. And the last thing is this spring right here. It is disgusting. Get there and get the needle nose. Boom, put that on. So I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up a little bit and we'll keep going. 
Last but not least, don't forget this guy. Make some room for it. Boom. Yeah, son. All right. She's ready. So I'm going to tidy up here a little bit. And um, I'm going to go ahead and break clean this. This is the ceiling surface, so you want to make damn sure it's clean. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to prep the hub. Okay. So I cleaned the seal mating surface. Now I got to wipe the bearing off. Now, when you put these back, you want to grease the bearing with some bearing grease. Now, granted, it will get lubrication from the differential fluid, but before the differential fluid gets over here, you want to make sure that it still has some grease. So what I'm going to do, take the bearing and literally just do this. Just kind of pack it, roll it around, get some more, roll it around. Can't put too much. It's not going to hurt anything. So let's keep going. there and this little guy goes in with it so I'm gonna go ahead and clean my hands off now I'm gonna go get the seal okay now instead of having to use silicone this new seal has this little this little piece right here which is really nice it's actually a sealing surface so you don't have to use RTV which is great so you're gonna Set it there. That should be sufficient. Nice and applied. And there is grease in here on the sealing surface. Now I went ahead and cleaned up that really good. That's the seal mating surface, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of extra grease right there just to help get it lubed. It's not gonna hurt anything. Okay. Okay, gonna greased up the seal. Gonna gently slide this guy in. Okay, now this bearing, cleaned it on a good part of the rag, there we go. Now slide it in. Now, when I took it off, seemed like it was reverse thread and it is so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, figure out what the torque spec is okay so the torque spec is 60 so I have to go to 60 foot-pounds while spinning it and this one is backwards thread so Go to 60 while spinning it.
Okay, so if there were new bearings, I'd have to go back five. Since they're used, I have to go back seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Damn, that looks good. Okay, so we get crappy rag and we're gonna wipe this. All right, now I'm gonna go grab the axle. All right, let's put the axle in. Now before it gets in all the way, I'm gonna get that glob off the ground, lube this seal up a little bit just so it's not, man, it's windy, all sorts of crap blows into your bearing grease. Okay. All right. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten these up. Okay, so that's what she'll look like, all cleaned up and done. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we can actually go back to our original project of doing the brakes. Okay, now back to the brakes. Make sure the rotor's all nice and clean. Not much coming off it. Boom. Now, this is pretty loose, so I'm gonna have to uh, adjust the e-brake once I get the brakes on. So I'm gonna go grab the new caliper. Okay, so these are those calipers I was telling you about. They're really nice. Red powder coated. And they come with the bracket. Is that one? Now it's time for the pads. Now before I do the pads, I'm gonna tighten the, uh, I'm gonna put a lug nut on here, then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, snug up the e-brake cable. See, it shouldn't move that easy. So what I do is try to get some of the mess out of the way. Get my big screwdriver. Okay, I got my screwdriver. Got the little plug out. Had to dig it out because it was covered with crap. But we knew that was going to be a thing. So Kind of fart around in here and look for it. You'll know when you find it. It's right there and then we're gonna rotate down. I 
I know it's a blind hole guys, sorry. Still moves. Now this is tightening up the e-brake. So this is spreading those e-brake shoes so that the pedal's tight. And if you, <clears throat> it's hard to see with the camera, but you can actually look in there and see the little gear that I'm turning. And this is setting the preload on the e-brake. I know some people don't use the e-brake, but it's handy when you're towing, you know, park somewhere so you don't have your stuff roll down a hill. All right, let's see how the e-brake feels. Oh, much better. It used to be really loose, so that's a good sign. Now I'm gonna snug it up just a hair more now that we pre-tension the cable. Okay, should be it. I can always go back and adjust it later if I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the little plug back. Okay, now let's do the brake pads. Uh oh get in there there's that one and this one Brake line. Okay, now this one doesn't come with a new hose or doesn't come with a new bolt. So I'm gonna have to take that one off and then put the hose on really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off first. Prelim preliminarily, all tongue tied. So get the brake line wrench.
try to do this quick so I don't drain the master cylinder, but it all has to be flushed anyway, so it's not too big of a loss. Put the caliper in there. Find the one that matches. I think it just left some copper residue on the bolt. I don't think it mashed the washer. At least I hope not. I think we'll be okay. There we go. Go and clean it. Let it dry. And this side is done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the tire on and we'll move to the next side. All right, now we got the passenger side all done too. And as suspected, this side was just as bad as the other one. Axle seal was blown, so went ahead and did the same thing. Replaced the uh, axle seal, pre-greased the bearings a little bit, put it together, and um, proceeded to bleed the brakes. Now, when you bleed the brakes on a vehicle, you want to start furthest from the master cylinder. So start with this one, then the rear drivers, then the front passenger and then the front driver that's how you do it and what will come out will surprise you this is the fluid that came out it's pretty much black and it originally started as clear so you want to make dang sure you get all the air out and you want to make sure you bleed to get all the contaminants out so we're pretty much done i mean this was a really really good project i'm really excited like I was saying, I'm really excited to see how, how this thing stops. I'm gonna start using this thing to actually do some work, pulling trailers and you know, that kind of thing. So I wanna make dang sure it stops, but I will do an update and let you know how everything works out. The last thing I have to do, which you normally don't have to do during a brake job is to top off the rear end because both axle seals were leaking and I don't know how much is in there. So just to cover my butt, go ahead and refill it. And yeah, just like when you're doing any brake job though, when you start the truck, before you put it in drive, reverse, anything, just pump the brakes until they get hard. If you don't, you could actually go down your driveway or start sliding forward and you will have no brakes for the first three, four or five pumps. So just make sure you pump the pedal multiple times until the uh, pedal gets hard and then you can go from there. So, so these are power stop pads. So before you really start driving, it says you wanna do, um, Five moderate to aggressive stops from 40 miles an hour down to 10 in rapid succession without letting the brakes cool. Don't come into a complete stop. 
If you're forced to stop, complete the stop and either shift the vehicle into park or give room in front so you can allow the vehicle to roll slightly while waiting. The rotors will get really hot and holding down the brake pedal will force the brake pad to contact the rotor and possibly create an imprint on the rotor. This imprint may contribute to the creation of brake shutter. So find a, find an abandoned street or an empty street and just do, um, you know, get going to 40 and then slow down to 10, then get going to 40, slow down to 10, do that five times. And then same thing, um, you know, go up to 35 and then, you know, moderately slow down to five, do that five times and then drive slowly around because those vents in the rotor will allow air to circulate and cool the rotor down. So just, um, you know, drive gently around and then um, come back to the house or wherever you're going and, and, you know, let it cool down, but try to drive as much as you can without heating up the brakes. And then, um, you know, let them just kind of chill and, you know, come and cool, you know, overnight or whatnot, or for a few hours just to come down to a, you know, room temperature. And then um, after that, you can use the brakes normally. So I've, I've had to do this procedure before. It's not bad, the brake, the rotors will stink a little bit because they'll still have, you know, some of the oil from the machining when they got created and whatnot. But I'm really excited to see how these things do. So I'll check back with you. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am back with the little follow-up video. It's been about two days and I've put 200 miles on this thing since the brake upgrade and oh my God, what a difference. It is night and day. It is probably the most worthwhile upgrade I've done to this thing so far. I mean, it is, it's legitimately night and day. I mean, there's no brake fade. You know, the initial stink went away after the brake and whatnot, but it's, you just, you touch the brakes and it throws you forward in the seat. It's, it's such a noticeable upgrade. And I mean, doing the brake hose has also made a huge difference as well, just because as the rubber gets old, as you apply the brakes, it can swell a little bit, but, um, stainless lines would be even more of a difference but i didn't need to put them on this thing because it's not lifted crazy or anything and i didn't feel it necessary but huge difference i'd recommend it for anybody that's trying to pull a trailer you know lives in a mountainous region that's um pretty much going to do anything campers toy haulers um you know dump trailer i pulled a boat trailer the other day and um same boat trailer when i pulled it about a month ago the brakes, the brakes knew it was there, but this time it was just like, pfft, whatever, you know, so I actually pulled that today and just got home a little while ago, but it's, it, it made a huge difference. I would definitely recommend these and the e-brake is huge. I mean, the e-brake used to be, you would, you'd have to push your foot all the way to the floor and it would bear, the truck would still move and I can only push this like two clicks and it's stuck and it's stuck solid tight, which is great. So there's so much spring tension on it, which means all of the stuff in the back's working after I rebuild it, rebuilt it after all that, uh, after those axle seal failures and whatnot. So glad I found that stuff in the back because, uh, you know, there's a reason it was stinking. And then all that crap and grease and dirt built up in the uh, vents on the rotors. No wonder they were smelling and getting hot, and not cooling off. So made a huge difference. But, um, like I always say, if you like, if you like the video, subscribe, click the subscribe button and, um, Questions, comments, you want more information, just let me know because it was definitely a worthwhile upgrade. So um, appreciate the support. I got a lot more coming for you. And um, yeah, talk to you guys later. Bye.